All right, I'm here with Michael Weaver of the Weaver Sales Academy. He is a former agent, probably a currently licensed agent, but a former insurance agent. And he was a captive agent with State Farm. I started off originally as a captive agent with Farmers Insurance. I was not the agent, but I worked for different agents. And uh, so I've got a little bit of experience in the captive world and how that works too. But you've got the Weaver Sales Academy. You've been able to live your insurance dream essentially uh, by you know starting an agency, growing it, and then being able to exit and and pursue your dream of of coaching and sales mentorship uh, and and different things like that. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. I feel uh, I feel blessed. The um, the insurance agency opportunity was absolutely amazing. I was living my dream while I was an agent. Um, it was a lot of fun. My wife and I, after the first couple of years of starting the business, we started as a new market. Um, and uh, so obviously a little bit of a grind those first couple of years, but then we started traveling probably year three and a half into the business, three months out of the year. And um, it was, it was awesome. I just, uh, I'm one of those guys that I go all in on everything I do. And so uh, earlier this year, we decided to hang up the the captive agency and pursue our dreams at Weaver Sales Academy and go all, all in on that. Burn the boats, my man. Absolutely. Yeah. Burning the boats. I like that. So I'm, I'm on, you know, weaversa.com and I'm looking around. You've got how many videos have you done in your video library for agents? <laughs> because I, I was looking at it. I mean, so we produce videos, you know, for, for different things that we've got going on within our organization. Uh, and, and every video that you do is time consuming, right? It, it takes a lot of time. How many videos are in your library? So that's a great question. I don't know exact amount of videos. I know we have over a thousand hours of content because um, wow. that was because when we created, so the ideal behind Weaver Sales Academy, so short, long story short, we were on a plane to New Zealand. We took a, we were out of the country for 40 days, 18 hour plane ride. I had had literally hundreds of calls with agents reaching out to me. Hey, Michael, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? And I'm like, there's an opportunity here. I really love to have conversations. I love to coach. I love to train. Um, I'm a constant learner myself, always reading, always investing in myself. And so we came up with this idea of Weaver Sales Academy and back in 2018. And we were like video training, like, Mm -hmm. and if you look video training, 75% of people learn best through video training software. That's why we watched all of corporate America go there. And so what we did back then is we had the playbook and then we came up with at that point in time, it was 500 videos. That's, that's when we launched Weaver Sales Academy. Then every training we've done then, because we do two live trainings every day or, or two live trainings a week, not every day we record every training we do and upload it. So we try to act like a 24 seven on demand university for insurance professionals and their teams. Absolutely. So with, with advice to agents, right? Because I mean, you've, we've got a audience of primarily independent insurance agents that, that we are working with, with advice to agents. If, if you had to give one piece of advice for people to start, what would you say that advice would be? In the insurance agency world? Yeah, just insurance. Oh, in <clears throat> there's so, you know this, there's so many pieces of advice we could give oh, here. Boy. Um, I think that patience, uh, patience is key in the insurance world. Like think about, because as salespeople, we want results now. We want it yesterday when in all reality, we are building, you're building a machine just not for this month, not for this year, but 30 years from now. If you do this thing the right way through processes and systems, it's a marathon. It's not a race. And so really making sure that you're patient with the process, you're implementing the processes and systems that are proven that will run your office for you, regardless if you're there or not. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. The last year that we owned our insurance agency, I spent most of my time floating in a pool in Hawaii. So um, that, that was not bad. Right. I mean, it's, um, it, it was, it was a good way to, uh, to be on the, on the way out. Uh, so t- tell me about your experience because you, so you, again, you were a state farm agent. Um, you grew, how did you, you didn't come into the state farm agency with these systems and processes that, that you now have for agents to access from all over the country. You started like, Cold calling out of a phone book. I mean, friends oh, yeah. and family, all, all that thing, all that stuff. I'm sure. 
But like, tell me about how, how your agency started, what, you, how you figured out, I mean, you know, what's working is kind of obvious, right? Because you put something out and either it produces results or it doesn't. Um, so, so the process that you went through to build these systems and processes uh, and, and then, you know, how they were working and how they helped you scale and, and reach your goals. Yeah, man, that's a great question. So, um, it really starts before I was an agent. So I actually worked for an agent straight out of college and I got my feet wet, f- fell in love with the insurance opportunity, um, helping folks really create financial plans. Like just a little bit of backstory on me. I grew up in a really just blue collar town, um, real small rural town in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. Um, mom and dad are great salt of the earth people, but obviously they didn't, I mean, they're just blue collar, which is awesome. I, I wouldn't change that lifestyle for, for anything. Cause it, brought, it really created a lot of character into who I am today. Um, but my dad lost his pension when I was in high school. And um, I knew right then, number one, I always wanted to be in control of my financial situation. And I wanted all of those around me to be in control of their financial situation. So out of college, went in, um, got an internship with an agent and lo and behold, fell in love with it. But I bring that up because those two and a half years I was with the agent, it allowed me to test processes and systems that I would start to create as a team member back then. So that's when I created my PNC sales conversation, which I listened to Brian, Tri- Brian Tracy, the psychology of selling every day for 18 months in a row on the way home to home from work, on the way to work. And so I always invested in myself, whether it was going to training courses, reading books, and that helped obviously form. And I, and I had the ability to practice these processes before I started an agency. Well, then my wife and I started the agency uh, April of 2014, non-traditional. We went the new market route, like I said earlier, and we were never given any customers, never given any book of business. And when I say non-traditional is I was not a big internet lead guy. So as a team member, the agent I worked with, he did internet leads in and out all day long. I don't know how much he spent, but he was spending some serious marketing dollars on leads. The beautiful thing about insurance you can do this business however you want, whether you want to do internet leads, whether you want to beat the pavement, whether you want to be referral based. And so I knew internet leads really weren't for me. So I did the cold calling approach to where we purchase, we purchase, I did actually, I was a hustler. So we had um, lots of success. And so people were reaching out to me. Obviously I gave them contact information. So I was given leads for free. Okay. So you, you, I was out there hustling, um, helping my peers. Okay. With, with good lead providers, they gave me thousands of leads for free in my office. And that's how we started. And then our social media presence. Um, so we were growing. I was in a low premium market. I mean, our average six month car is like 300 bucks. Average fire product was like 800. And we, we were growing those first three years. We grew at a little over a million in premium each year. So wow. by the year, so that by the year, that three mark, when I started to step a little bit away from the business and start traveling, like I, I mentioned to you before, um, we were up above that 3 million mark, which was fantastic. And, and the growth pace continued through really that year four and a half to five is when things started to calm down just a little bit. Sure, but yeah, that's I mean, also when I started to lose interest. So it's funny um, with businesses, because my wife and I, we own a few different businesses, but when you're, when you start to lose that purpose and passion, like now that I look back, there's a direct, we were still growing. We just weren't growing at the pace we had, but now I'm like, it's because I lost, lost my passion for it. Like my passion went into helping and coaching my peers, not growing my insurance, per, my insurance business. Sure. Well, and, and I mean, with anything, right. You know, the larger you get, um, the, the more challenging it becomes, no matter how engaged you are to, to post the kind of sales growth, um, that, that you have historically had. So, um, so tell me about, you know, so, so that you transitioned in, when did you open Weaver Sales Academy officially? Yeah. So we created the idea, like I said, that had been November of 2017. We came back in the end of December, got to work in January, brought on our first customer, August of 2018. With Weaver Sales Academy. Yep. Perfect. And, um, how many agents are you coaching through Weaver Sales Academy right now? Yeah. So we're up, a, we're up above, I haven't looked at end of month numbers yet through February, but uh, we're at about 450 agencies across the country. So wow. when you, in, when you include team members, um, we're a little above 3000 total folks that we're helping out currently. 
Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I noticed as I was looking around on your site is that, you know, your, your subscriptions are very reasonably priced. Um, and the subscription includes a meeting with you. How often? So what we do, so with, at Weaver Sales Academy, like I, like I told you, like our main goal is to help agency owners and team members live more confidently day in and day out of their, their day-to-day operations, both personally and professionally. Look, we try to take a holistic approach to this um, because you have to be able to perform personally before you can perform professionally. Um, So we do a live, we do live trainings every week. That's, I think that's a big part of our training program that a lot of people like. We're constantly doing trainings every Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, And then on Mondays, I do an onboarding best practices call where I actually open myself up for a live Q&A, whether that's 30 minutes or whether that's two hours, um, because that's that's what I love. And we actually just started a new feature within our program that we actually offer one-on-one coaching ability as well. That's perfect. And and so th- tell me about the mastermind calls, because you get two mastermind calls every month as part of your program. Yep. Yep. So the mastermind calls, those are he- held on Tuesday. So like I said, we do it training every Tuesday, every Wednesday. The mastermind calls are typically either where I'm going to be bringing in um, really heavy hitters in the industry to come in, pick their brain, best practices, processes, and systems, things like that. Or we will go ahead and teach a certain subject matter uh, around insurance, whatever it may be. So, um, and then on the other two Tuesday calls a month, um, they're called Sharpen the Saw Calls. That's where we get on and we role play with team members and agents live for an hour. So two hours a month, we're role playing sales conversations, closing techniques, overcoming objections, pivots, you name it. That's awesome. And then the coaching calls with you weekly, is that a one-on-one? So the, so the coaching calls, that's on those Monday calls, the live Q and a, so it's a group setting that you can get me one-on-one. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you got the video training platform with, it says 500 plus videos. I'm sure that that grows every week. And then uh, tell me about the 150 page playbook of all processes and systems. Cause that was what grew our agency was taking our successes and turning those things into, we talked about this a little bit before the call turning those into solid and systems and processes on, you know, so that way, cause it's like you, you do something and it's like, wow, that worked. That was great. Well now how can we do that every time? Right. Um, so tell me about your, your uh, playbook of systems and processes. Yeah. So the processes and systems kind of like what we talked about for the call. I mean, my goal as a agency owner was I, it's like McDonald's. It doesn't matter if you go to McDonald's in New York or you go to a McDonald's in LA The double cheeseburger tastes the same every single time. It's made the same way. And so that's what I wanted to implement in my agency and in every business that my wife and I own. And that was one, really one characteristic that stood out amongst all the calls I had with agency owners is they really struggle with processes and systems, not only creating processes and systems, but then getting them on paper so that everyone has that consistent message doesn't matter if it's team member A or team member B, we do the same way with every single customer every single time. So it's the same customer experience and same results Um, because then that's how you're going to provide clarity in your office. So um, this playbook has literally just about any sales process you can think of from conversations to hiring, to recruiting, to marketing, to team meetings. Um, And so it's extremely powerful. So we have an agent playbook, then we have the team member playbook, which is going to be more sales specific um, through those conversations, the closing techniques, activities it takes to be successful, things of that nature. Yeah. Well, and if a new agent out there can replicate what you did, and I mean, because you, and really, you know, I, I'm impressed for a number of reasons, but you know, one of the big reasons I'm impressed is because as a captive agent, uh, not to discourage any captive agents that are listening to this call, but as a captive agent, being one myself, that's super challenging, right? Because like, I kind of felt like I had the world, you know, in the palm of my hand when I went independent, because I went from an environment where there was one year when I was done with being a captive agent was I, I had one year where, uh, I had a plumber and I had worked years to get this guy on my books. Like I had seen him in the community. I'd known him and talked to him. And then one day he, he called me and he was like, let's do it. Let's sit down and figure this thing out. So we figured it out. Uh, You know, we went in, we quoted him. I mean, he had a fleet of cars. It was a great account. And then uh, renewal time comes around (laughs) and, and the underwriter, he had no claims at all. The underwriter, uh, increased his premium, I want to say about like $17,000. And I, I said to the underwriter, I said, how am I supposed to sell this account 
and, and look this guy in the eye and tell him that this is the best deal for him moving forward into his next policy year. And the underwriter said to me, I don't know. I'm not the salesperson. So you'll have to figure that out. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> like, do you know what pays your, your salary? Uh, and so that was a super frustrating thing for me. And um, so then when I went independent, I never had that conversation ever again. Right. And, and the reason, because it's like, okay, you're going to increase his price by $17,000, which generally speaking, the uh, non-captive underwriters don't do that because they know you'll be like, all right, see you later. Um, and so the, I think instead of a more of a sledgehammer approach, like I, I, my experience has been with a lot of the captive is, is this more of like a precision approach on, you know, carving out the non-profitable accounts instead of maybe, you know, non-profitable industries to a point. But, you know, I say all that because as, as a captive agent, so you guys are growing, you know, at a, a million plus in new business a year for three plus years you're doing that essentially with one arm tied behind your back, right? Because you don't, you don't have all the tools that, that these independent agencies do where it's like, fine, I'll shop it. So, so tell me about, you know, if, if you had to boil your experience, which I mean, you know, four or 500 plus videos on your platform, there's a lot of moving parts with, with how you did it, right? There's details in everything, but what, what would you say that the overall philosophy of your agency was that generated that success? Hard work. <clears throat> Hard. I mean, seriously, like in, in doing the right thing. So you bring up a lot of valid points when it comes to a captive insurance agency. I think captive is amazing. That's all I ever knew. Like I loved being a captive agent, but there's a lot of perks to it. I'm not trying to play down those. For sure. For sure. But it, but what you're saying though, is, is hundred percent right. Because it's like a double-edged sword. Like you've got some brand recognition, but at the same time, like we went through a series in my market area for three years at eight, out of, eight out of every 10 households we closed. Okay. That, and so this is closed. We were more than 500 a year, more than that's not quoting. So eight out of every 10 households we closed for roughly two and a half to three years were more expensive by around $50 a month. Okay. So, but that's what really built that value based sales culture, um, both in myself growing up. It, I mean, that's where I got my foot, my feet wet was a captive agency. And then experiencing that because as a captive agent, you're never going, it's a cyclical business. You're never always going to be the cheapest and hopefully you're never always going to be the most expensive either. Um, hopefully you're, you're like that 50, 50 is what I always aim for. And so when I think about, man, how we grew at the pace we did. Number one, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Like you got to love what you're doing. You got to be doing it for the right reasons. I'm a big advocate of leading by example. Like I never once asked anybody in my office to do anything that I was not willing to do. Um, those first few years of starting with from ground zero with no guaranteed income, man, I was, I was out there hustling. Like I was beating the pavement. I was working 17, 18 hours a day, every single day. And so when I think about that, but it didn't seem like work because it was so it was much fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you're out there doing what you love. And so it's funny you ask that question because hard work, like hard work always pays off. Like the harder I work, you know, the old saying, the luckier I get. It's like luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Sure. And so I just think that hard work, obviously processes and systems like I've already touched base on and then creating the culture, creating that winning culture to make sure that your team knows how to win. Okay, I think that that is one area that a lot of agents struggle with, even themselves, is how do we win in this business? Because there's so many shiny balls you can chase. There's so many things we can do as insurance professionals, but what can you do? What are the two to three tasks you can do every single day to be successful in the business? Yeah, and I think mindset too is a huge portion of it too. Cause I know that the agents that I worked for before opening my own agency, you know, I mean, I learned a lot from them. Right. And I'm really glad that I had that experience and, and time with them uh, because I think that, you know, in too many ways to mention it prepped me for what I was you know going to end up doing, but they had this small town scarcity mindset. My, you know, I grew up in a town of less than 3000 people. Um, you know, my, my high school graduating class was I think 200 people and we were the <laughs> biggest class to ever go through my high school. And, and so I ended up, a, you know, a couple towns over bigger, bigger town, but still, you know, not, not really large. 
And, and they had this scarcity mindset where it's like, there's only so much to go around. And I mean, and, you know, we, our agency surpassed all of the agencies that I had ever worked for within, you know, two and a half years of opening. And those places have been around for 30 years. I think it was just, you know, yeah, it was a mindset. It was like, there's basically an unlimited amount of money and business to be had in the world. And, you know, all you got to do is tap into that one vein that, that feeds you everything you possibly could want to be fed. And it's, it's really, you know, and then no matter what you do, right? Like, I mean, if you start off as a gas station attendant, if you start off as, you know, somebody, you know, cleaning company, no matter what you do, you're going to start off poor, generally speaking. And so that, that was where it was like, okay, where do I want to be poor at right now? And then what does the opportunity look like for me once I, you know, break through that barrier and, and kind of get things going for myself? You know, in five years from now, what's the opportunity that I'm looking at if I continue to hustle for no money? Because that's what we all do, right? Some of us just do it longer than others because we create reasons in our minds not to do things, I think, more often than we, we create reasons in our minds to do things. Um, so tell me if, if I go on and I click get started here on weaversa.com forward slash programs and uh, I, I get this well, Weaver Sales Academy Mastermind subscription going to my going for myself. Today is Tuesday. What day do I start receiving benefits for my agents and my uh, my agency? If I don't have any agents, or if I do, right? W- when do I start seeing benefits flowing in? Immediately? Right now? Right you now? Sign up, you get immediate access. <laughs> yeah, man, it, we've got it pretty streamlined. So yeah, you'd, you'd receive immediate login information. You receive an onboarding email that tells you step-by-step what to do. Then you're going to get reached out from my support team to schedule an onboarding call with you in a week or two, just to make sure that you understand how to navigate uh, best practices. I do the call every single Monday. So yeah, we, uh, we have it set up to where you get immediate access and start rocking and rolling. For sure. To somebody that is struggling to get the results in their agency that they want to get. Again, you know, I know this is like an impossible question, but but you have to boil your advice down to a couple sentences. What do you say? Look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. I mean, the person that typically is holding the agency back is a person you're looking at every single day. Um, can kind of go back to that that abundance mindset you're talking about, the ability to change. I mean, change is change is the one constant in this world. And it's the one thing that a lot of people have a hard time with, but you yourself in complacency. Okay. But you have to be willing to, if, if, if there's something not going on in your agency, whether you're not hitting the production numbers you want, whether the culture is not what you want it to be, whether you don't have enough freedom in the agency, maybe you're not making as much money. Typically it stems back to you. What are you doing every single day to move the needle? And what are you doing to help the team make sure that they're moving the needle every single day? And are you willing to make the changes necessary to become the agency owner, the business owner, and create the future that you're wanting out of this? But it's a process. That's why I opened with pay. You also have to be patient with the process. For sure. How can folks get in touch with you, Michael? Yeah. And so um, I'd love if, uh, if you followed me. So I put out a ton of free content on social media every single day. So you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I've got a YouTube, I've got TikTok. So Michael Weaver, um, super easy to follow there. And uh, my website, you can always go to that www.weaversa.com. Uh, my company is Weaver Sales Academy. So yeah, Google it, check us out. If you have any questions, also um, follow me on the insurance buzz. Uh, that I do a podcast as well. So it's called the insurance buzz. I try to put out a lot of really great content um, there as well. So yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Michael, thank you so much for your time today and um, look forward to having you back at some point. No, thank you so much for, uh, for the opportunity to come on. I appreciate it very much, my man. Absolutely. Thanks.